Not sure what the penalty will have to be paid for the residents of Miami for the remarkable weather the city has enjoyed for the better part of the last week. Yes, it's true. Miami enjoys a favorable climate this time of year. But anyone who's been here in the months of March and now April knows that it gets more than a little bit, how shall we say, sultry. But the last four days, well, as the kids would say, not so much. It's been a remarkable working environment for those who still have work to do at the Tennis Center at Crandon Park. And today is no exception. It's semifinals day on Key Biscayne, and our first contest of the Final Four features two women who have come to meet from divergent paths. After a few years of physical impediments, Andrea Petkovic is back. And after fully enjoying a full season again in 2014, there were great expectations for this year, and she promptly stumbled, losing her opening three matches. But she's fine-tuned her game since, even winning a title. And she's returned to the last four in Miami for the first time in four years. Carla Suarez Navarro came out of the gates impressive from the start. She just likes to do her thing, and why not? The glare isn't as bright when you're flying under the radar, but she might not be able to escape the unwanted notoriety much longer as she's developing into one of the game's most consistent performers. Slow and steady often wins the race, and the Spaniard will bring her calm demeanor to the raucous environs of Miami today. Welcome, tennis fan. We have a good one for you. Carlos Suarez Navarro, Andrea Petkovic for a spot against either Serena Williams or Simona Halep. It's a dazzling final four at this second premier mandatory event of the year. We hope you're ready. Carlos Suarez Navarro is. Andrea Petkovic taking her time. She says she likes Miami. It's that sort of wild, crazy climate that she finds so enticing to go against what she says is her natural sort of stiff demeanor. It's hard for many to believe she actually feels that way about herself because she has so much personality. We'll see if she brings some of that to the court today. Okay, girls, condition will be the same. Uh, just remind her for the Hawkeye, if you'd like to challenge, stop immediately, make a clear sign. And we have a TD turnover. Any questions? No? Would you like to go, Andrea? It's time to get business down to the nitty gritty. We're talking about the very end when it matters most. The final four semifinal action today from inside the stadium at the Miami Open presented by Itaú. Carlos Suarez Navarro poised to make a move already to career high ranking to go inside the top 10 if she can move past Andrea Petkovic, who the German having such great success a couple years ago, hampered by injuries, has found her way back. And she too will be a mainstay in the top 10 coming up. Well, it started with three Americans, two Germans amongst the last eight. But we now have four different countries represented, Serena and Halep, to meet tonight at 9 p.m. local time. The Spaniard and German starting our day off. Hello, tennis fan. Once again, a warm welcome to you from Key Biscayne, sitting alongside Marion Bartoli. Marion, do you see those white things in the cloud? Do you remember them? We haven't seen them for a couple days. I haven't. What is that? A I cloud? think they're called clouds. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's really surprising. <laughs> well, the beautiful skies overhead, that is not a surprise, but the temperatures have been. They're going to get in the mid 80s today, but still the humidity is still holding off for just a minute, and that makes it very comfortable for both players. And Marion, as you know, comfortable and being just in your environment that you enjoy is so important for your games. Let's first start to talk about how comfortable Carla Suarez Navarro has been. And for her season this year, it's been remarkable. She's gotten off to a 20 and six start. She's playing at what seems to be the height of her powers. Absolutely, I think it took her a little bit of time to feel comfortable on the tour. Um, I remember she used to be a little bit shy and a little bit overwhelmed sometimes by um, some difficult situations such as playing the top players on the central courts around the world and so far and especially in this tournament when she take out Venus Williams after losing the first set six of she has shown she has definitely improved in this department and also as you can see very sturdy since the beginning of the year getting to the quarterfinal all better in a lot of tournaments uh, not able to perform in that final in Antwerp due to a neck injury when she was supposed to play against Andrea Petkovic so it's actually going to be a rematch of this final yep. but it's always great for a player to feel every time you're entering a tournament you will be able to win some matches because you're playing that sturdy very confident tennis she has been able to show so far. 
Yeah, she was able to bolster, I believe, what Marion made mention of the match against Venus Williams. Shut out in the opening Three set. We'll see minutes. her progress through. But yeah, being able to be consistent enough to get to seven quarterfinals or better in now her eighth event, marvelous. Vergale, gone, only four games. Cornet, also out, only four games. A nice win against Red Vanska to really make her feel as though the top 10, they're not unbeatable. Absolutely, and that for me it's really those key moments in tournaments. It's when you start to play and to beat those top seeds who are opening the draw for you. And a good one against Agara Vanska, who is of course a top eight player, but someone you can beat because she's not going to blow out of, of the court like someone like Serena Williams, for example. So it's just a great seed, I think, for Carla Suarez Navarro in team of uh, match play, and then the tough one really against Venus Williams and being able to tell this one out. Four and two versus a top 10 this year for Carlos Suarez Navarro. Now, talking about Andrea Petkovic, it hasn't been as easy. The Serbian born German, and she says she likes to mix those two personalities of her Serbian parents with her German upbringing. Very proud to be from Darmstadt, Germany now, but ranked number 10 in the world. Very difficult start to the year, 0 and 3. Then some tough fought victories in Fed Cup play against Australia, and from there, she's been springboarding upward. Absolutely, sometimes that's all you need. It's just having this uh, great week with all your team. Um, I know Andrea Petrovic is a really hard worker, so she probably has put a lot of hours in the gym during the off-season, and just sometimes you put some extra pressure when you start in Australia. You want those hard hours during the winter time in Europe to pay off straight away. I actually saw her match against um, the young American Madison Brangle Madison in Brangle, Australia, yeah. and she lost this one in three sets, and it was really uh, heartbreaking to see her play. She was so nervous and uh, really, really uh, showing some lack of confidence. And sometimes just all you need is having your whole team supporting you during one week of Fed Cup, feeling confident, winning for your own country, and all one of a sudden, minute shake off all this extra pressure and just open your shoulder and start to play. And you can see a route so far toward the semi-final. I've been more than clean. Really winning in straight set, not causing any problem to herself, spending the less time as possible on court and arrive extremely fresh for the semi-final. You're absolutely right. And the only semi-finalist to move through without having dropped a set prior. She's hoping to continue that trend to move on to the final, which would be her best result. She's back where she enjoyed her last match four years ago beating Caroline Wozniacki, then number one, before losing to Maria Sharapova in the semis. You see their history between the two. They were supposed to, as Marion mentioned, meet in the final for Antwerp, but a neck injury prevented Suarez Navarro from taking the court. Other than that, they've split four meetings, all on hard courts. Navarro actually getting the last victory, one of those odd turns, something we'll see later tonight. And by the way, in the chair, Zhang Guan, but she'll respond to Jenny minutes. very nicely. Good to see you, Jenny. Andrea Welcome Berkovic to the semifinals. But going back to that Sofia to tournament and what was interesting about it, we'll see tonight Serena Williams taking on Simona Halep, who Serena lost to Halep, Time. but then beat her in the final. It was Suarez Navarro beating Petkovic in the first round of the Tournament of Champions, but ultimately it was Petkovic who won the title. Absolutely, that's the beauty of this um, last tournament of the year, which uh, include some round robins and it's only really two tournaments of the year when it happens and you have uh, sometimes just a tough start because you don't know how the core plays really but you can recover from a loss and then go on and win the tournament that's the only case and i think it's quite fun and um, i'm sure um, andrea also having the feeling of finishing the, the year on the win you go on vacation and not lose <laughs> i can <laughs> assure you this you feel you have the right to send the rackets back home by you know, transporter and yourself put uh, and go on vacation and not having you to carry on your racket this time. Spot in the top 10 is guaranteed for the win in this match. And for Carlos Suarez Navarro, that's new territory. Again, we talk about how the fact she's been able to fly under the radar. She won't be able to do any more if she gets to the final of this premier mandatory event. Currently at a career high ranking of number 12 in the world. If she wins, she's in the top 10. If Andrea Petkovic does so, well, she stays there and enjoys that position. That's going to be exciting here at Club Bartoli. We've got Marion, we've got <laughs> Kevin, we've got you, tennis fan. We're going to get underway, do some dancing, doing some celebrating. We might even see the Petco dance at the conclusion of today's match if indeed the German is able to win and get to the, the last seven. day. Andrea Excitement Andrea abounds Andrea. in Key Biscayne. We hope you're ready, ready and enjoy the play first play. semifinal as Andrea Petkovic gets us underway from Key Biscayne. La 
Obviously a big moment, big tournament, big round, and perhaps expectations for Petkovic. She's such a perfectionist. There's going to be a bit of nerves to start. Well, at least the tactic is very clear. Kara Suarez Navarro is going to play as much as possible on the back end of Andrea Petkovic. I think she directed 95% of her shots so far towards the side of the court. It's really rare at this level to see a pattern that is so obvious. Net seconds. Miss Suarez Navarro trying to call on the right near side. Most called in. So right in front of Shang Wan, the chair umpire, who called it good, and the challenge coming from Suarez Navarro. Boy, that's Ten impressive. Minutes. The technology able to get right <laughs> through there and the line judge who also was in agreement, didn't make a call. Feels a little better about his position oh. early. Oh. 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 Already starting to see some negativity from Petkovic, who was out on the court Eating. with her coach and hitting around 10.30 this morning and looked very loose, was joking, had a smile on her face, was very loose and performing very well. And that shows how difficult it is to go from that environment right on this very court to later in match play. Well, that's sometimes really the tricky balance to find is you're almost too loose in the practice and then the stress start to arrive oh. as soon as you, um, you start the first point of the match and you're almost cut out of guard, really. So um, I always see Serena Williams when she warm up it's extremely serious about a warm up, and sometimes it's just a better way to uh, to be ready. Obviously, uh, different things work for different persons, but um, But I'm sure Andrea Petkovic know herself well. Yes. So she know what works for her. A shaky little start and facing a couple break points, but no damage. Keeping the ball low to Suarez Navarro's backhand. Draws the air. And she's safely at deuce. Oh! oh. What well, you see so far, Andreas Petkovic's stress and nervosity is showing and a little bit of lack of leg movement. She's, uh, for me, a little bit too stiff. Not enough uh, knee bend, moving around the ball with her feet. I always use this expression. When you're stressed, you feel like you have some glue under your sneakers. <laughs> you're absolutely glued to the court. It's so difficult to move. The opposite when uh, you're feeling great, you're almost flying. It's a very 
one very difficult volley to execute, but yes. after such a long rally, feeling a bit tired, it's a great change of pace. Longest exchange between the two thus far, coming on the eighth point, 22 strokes. I think that's more than the whole entire match of we call between Karina Priskova and herself. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she never saw a rally of 22 shots. Called a match the other night between John Isner and Milos Raonic. I'm sure there was a set that went by <laughs> where there wasn't two <laughs> 22 <laughs> strokes. <laughs> I watched this one on TV and I was thinking about you, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> In the comfort with bonbons and <laughs> champagne, right? <laughs> I appreciate the thought. <laughs> Petkovic just a point shy from getting out of a jam. Very well played. She's using that forehand cross court so well, the same as against Venus Williams in that second and third set. The first set, she just couldn't find it. As you can see, she's really able to redirect the game very, very well using that uh, wrist acceleration. Well, this one with Clay is going to be a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> Clay is coming in in Europe very soon. Clay season already getting essentially underway in some respects for many who've already packed their bags finish. and either heading to Charleston or over to Europe, but a couple trying to prolong their stay on the hard courts. Uh, Ginny Bouchard was still um, here in Miami yesterday. I saw her. She's practicing uh, same hotel. Taking a wild card in mm, Absolutely, right? and uh, she's practicing in the hotel in, in the island when they have some um, green clay tennis court. Champion of Charleston last year, serving to try to get on the board first. And yeah, maybe, as Marion alluded to, that glue starting to loosen up under the feet of Andrea Petkovic because she seems stuck for a moment, but she survives three threats against her serve in the opening game, managing to still post a one love start. Well, right from the start, I'm, I'm wondering, it's already 80 degrees, Marion. Would you have worn a dark outfit on a bright, sunny day right after 1 o'clock? Well, the problem is um, I used to be sponsored by with the same brand as you have one outfit that the, your sponsor is requiring you to wear. Ah, okay. Um, no matter if it's day, night, very hot or not. But it's a very breathable um, fabric, so okay. you don't really feel at all the... The attraction the of color, the light. Yeah, exactly. The color is uh, having an impact on you. It's a very, very breathable, light fabric. That's good to know now because Carla Suarez Navarro, the type of game that she plays, she doesn't mind it being a physical contest, nor does Petkovic for that matter. Here's Carla to serve for the first time. It was a remarkable turnaround. If you happened to see the Venus Williams Carlos Suarez Navarro match, if you didn't, well, we can tell you. It was one way traffic and it was blistering. Venus was just crushing the ball in the opening set, not allowing CSN to have really any say about how that match to that point was going to go. But after she got through that first set being bageled, she started to walk towards her chair. Oh. 
And you say, well, that's what? what everybody does, right? They always walk there. The coach was already there. <laughs> you, exactly. <laughs> Somebody beat her to a chair. <laughs> and he had some of the best words that you said you've heard from a coaching standpoint. Absolutely. I thought him and uh, Nick Speaking Sapiano yesterday was Javi two of Budo, the right? Yes. Yep, it was sorry. two of the best coaching I probably ever heard. Of course, after my great father. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Dr. Walter, <laughs> yes. Got to put him up there. But he really oh. said what matters. Such as, you're not putting any intensity at all. So of course she's beating you, she's slow, it's not because you're trying and she's better than you, it's just because you're not yourself. Just put some intensity, start to use your forehand, start to uh, really be engaged in that match, and you will see you, anything can happen. And well, it was right. Just like that, there was a dramatic turnaround as far as Navarro was able to win the second set dropping just a single game. That's extremely well played. Such a tough shot to hit that forehand down the line. The high ball from Andrea Petkovic. Both players are really feeling the ball very, very well Yay. today. So I think we're in for a very great encounter. Because sometimes when you have two players who are not really familiar with being in the latter stage of some major tournament like this one, it tends to be both of them extremely tight and nervous. And we, uh, it's difficult to feel the ball completely the opposite today. Both of them are playing their best tennis at the same time. As we mentioned, a champion of Charleston last year, Andrea Petkovic. We can tell you that if you go to WTATennis.com over the weekend, you'll start to see the draw for the 2015 version. Jeannie Bouchard already accepting a wild card. Lots of players heading up to the green clay on Daniel Island. Absolutely love this tournament. Oh, there are some fans amazing. around the country who can drive there. It's just absolutely amazing. Such a great atmosphere. Tournament director Eliano Adams. It's just so nice with all the players. We're receiving little small gifts every day. You got a gift? Yeah, every day we were having a gift. It was just those little special things that makes the tournament so great. Southern hospitality. It's, it's also a fan-friendly tournament. You have, uh, of course, the center court, but then you have the um, Althea Gibson court when you feel so close from the action. You really uh, can feel the players next to you. You can watch them practice. I love Charleston. Oh, <laughs> I agree completely. And we're not even talking about the food yet, which is remarkable. Petkovic serving 15 all. Has said that she has started to embrace and put her arms around the city of Miami. She loves it here. She says it just balances her. Go figure. from that ball, but sometimes um, what Andrea Peskovic has a tendency to do with her forehand, which is getting too close to the ball. She has such a, a short preparation and that can cause some mistakes. Again, uh, for you, for you are at home on your forehand, especially if you play one-handed, you really have to catch the ball in front of you, give yourself some space. <laughs> Better in that department, of course, Roger Federer. He's good at that? <laughs> no, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Seems to have the sport down pretty well. Cover really well, but she hit four or five shots just inside the service square. Andra Petkovic 
Because they both finally need to find some depth. As far as number one, they're able to capitalize on the four or five very short shots. Petkovic. Just getting off the back of the baseline. That paint giving a little extra injection of pace. And Suarez Navarro not able to get her backhand on it. As we saw, Andrea still looking for her first winner after committing a myriad of unforced errors through these opening three games. Like yesterday with Serena Williams as well. That's her father. Zoran Petkovic. Both of Andrea's parents, Serbian born. And she says she's got a lot of their fire in him, but she's also proud to be German. I have an anecdote to tell you about uh, Mr. Petkovic. Oh, uh, now, hold on now, because I have a feeling this is a good one, but we're at okay. almost <laughs> break point here. This is an important moment because I want to hear all of the story about Zoran. Suarez Navarro again looking to break this her fourth try in this opening stanza. And it's there for Carlos Suarez Navarro. We said slow and steady wins the race so far. She has just been remarkably consistent. Her opponent has not. Petkovic com committing 10 unforced errors falls behind the early break. Trying to get back to a final for Carlos Suarez Navarro. It's been tricky. She got to the final in Antwerp, but couldn't answer the bell against her opponent today because of a neck injury. So a rematch of sorts, though they never actually took the court. Does have one title in her possession, winning in Oredas against Svetlana Kuznetsova. Before that, she had been 0 for 5 in finals. Remarkable consistency this season. She's part of the 20 something club this year. That is 20 or more wins on tour, 20 and 6 record. And as we said, Marion, results that say seven quarterfinals or better in now eight events, it's hard to improve upon that. Absolutely, and you can see why, really. Her game is so steady and consistent. She has uh, such strong legs, so she's able to have uh, a good balance all the time on her shot, very good technique as well. So there's not much I can go wrong, really, with um, her game. She's, uh, she's having a very quite simple technique, really. Just concentrate really well. Not showing too many uh, emotions, whether positive or negative. Just going on with the flow. I mean, it's beautiful forehand cross court that just have been working so well so far in this tournament. Against Venus and today again.
the key so far if Andrea Petkovic wants uh, to win this match. She has to really um, force herself to play with more pace. I think her average game, a 70 or 80 percent game, as we call it, is uh, a little bit too uh, soft for disturbing Suarez Navarro. So she has to try to hit the ball harder, and she has to target this backhand. The forehand really is working extremely well for the Spaniard. Just hitting that same target over and over and over again. She's using that slice ward and then not trying to go to the open court, but just brushing that ball cross court again. So if I'm Petkovic, I want to take a step on the side and just start to hit those return down the line. Give herself a chance. Okay. And Carla Suarez Navarro <laughs> consolidates. And she just goes about her business, doesn't she? Not a lot of flash, but the success speaks for itself through four games. Three of the opening four in set number one. Well, we talked a little bit about Zoran Petkovic. You said you had a good story. I've been waiting on pins and needles. Well, I don't know if it's a good story, but at least it's a story that tells you what the parents feel like sometimes. So um, I was just retired, and he saw me at the Australian Open 2014. And he said, well, Marion, how do you feel now you're retired as your father felt? And he's like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a different life, but everyone is a lot less stressed and uh, such a relief for my parents. And he said, well, if you can tell to Andrea, she I want her to retire. <laughs> I just can't <laughs> take this anymore. It's awful. It's just such a pain. I suffer so much every time when she plays. I'm so stressed. And it's like, well, you know, I know it's difficult, but if that's what she loved the most, then you have to, you know, accept it and obviously not go through the pain, but really uh, accept no, her decision. But that just shows you for you at home that, you know, of course you see the players, you see the action on the court, but there is a lot of people around us that are supporting us year around, and obviously the family is a massive support and just suffer a lot through. <laughs> <laughs> suffer for their art. <laughs> Yeah, they suffer through every point, don't they? Your folks were pretty emotional that way, very invested. My father was fine, my mother, <laughs> not so fine. <laughs> I could sometimes, my mother was not coming very often, but sometimes she loved the sunny tournament. So of course she was a regular visitor of Miami. And when I was playing, I could hear her in the stands. Just before I was hitting the ball, I was like, <gasps> <laughs> As I was hitting <laughs> it, it was just awful. That could be distracting. <laughs> like, Mom, please, trust me. No, 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 no. I'm not going to miss every single ball I'm hitting. And the first winner for Andrea Petkovic comes via an ace. Tries to hold off Suarez Navarro. Yes, for Zoran Petkovic, he attended university here in the United States in South Carolina, which is why that win in Charleston last year was so heartwarming for the Petkovic family because he had roots there from his education. well left for Zoran to be able to return about an hour from where he went to college and received his upper education to be able to go there and see his daughter win. He said it was very gratifying and really was a great opportunity for the family to sort of embrace South Carolina. I'm sure that must have been bringing some great memories. Yeah. And it was great to see Andrea back too and performing at such a high level. And here she is once again. Game. Back into the semifinals for a second time in Miami, doing so in 2011. Lost to Sharapova. Today, she's a bit behind. Just a break, though, as she faces Suarez Navarro.
Andrea Petkovic garners a lot of attention and support wherever she goes. Very popular player on WTA. Understandably so. Gets the attention of people such as Darren Cahill, who works with the Adidas group. Out courtside enjoying his perch. Also dressed in dark clothing. What's going on? Killer doesn't fear the sun, but he is smart to put on a cap and some sunnies. Slip, slap, slop. Carlos Suarez Navarro also enjoys support here as the Miami tournament is affectionately known by one of its two nicknames, the Latin Slam. Born in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria in Spain. Wow, that's a Spanish accent. Loving it. Now makes her home in Barcelona. <laughs> Barcelona, I think. Of course, a large Spanish-speaking contingent that makes their home here in South Florida, particularly in the Miami area. I remember the first few years when I played here. The years when Marcelo Rios or David Benya was playing. And it was just wide. It was just incredible. Carlos Moya. I remember absolutely. I remember a match one in the Sochella. I remember a match between Andrea Gassi and Marcelo Rios here in nice session. It was just incredible to be in the stands and watching that. Just give you goosebumps. I can see they're just trying to peek out now at those memories, but not quite. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, for Carlos Suarez Navarro, that's been a comforting sort of source of support. Just wasn't quite sure if she could expect it, but she does know through the murmurings of fellow Spaniards on the men's and women's side that there is support here. And she found it very reassuring as well after her win over Venus Williams, the hand that she got after taking down a three-time champion who makes her home not far from here. That is the best way to enter a semifinal for sure. Yeah, witnessing those good first serve numbers and she's getting that percentage up there now 13 of 17 today. That's really a shot that Andrea Petkovic could no, not no, allow no, no. as far as number two hit. It's that's forehand cross court. She has won so many points hitting that shot. She has to find a way to do not allow her to hit this one. So either going very fast, the forehand, or really getting that backhand cross court to the backhand of Suarez Navarro, but just not in the middle. Speaking about uh, Andrea Petkovic, she actually said in her post-match interview when she beat Karolina Pliskova, Miami could make a good home. I think Miami can make a good home from everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to say Miami too. Speaking specifically about herself though, and, and as you know, I, I agree with both of you. Uh, for Andrea, she said, you know, Indian Wells was interesting. That early loss there, and I, I never really felt comfortable. And there's something about it. And one of the interviewers and reporters said, it's too pristine. And she goes, exactly. It's too clean. It's too orderly. For my temperament and my German background, she says, for me, I'm, I'm very stiff. I'm naturally uptight. And that sort of feeds into that. She says she loves the chaos of Miami. I was lucky enough to play really well in both events, but it's two completely uh, different yeah, yeah. events. I think for me, what's really come down to is bottom line is two different almost game. One is you play in very dry heat with the boys flying, and I think it doesn't suit her game very well. And one in here, when it's more humid, it's become more physical, and I think that fits her really well. As far as the tactics of her game and, and actually how it flows, that speaks volumes from what you're saying. But I think what she was referencing in many ways was mentally for her to be able to unload and unwind and relax. She says the calm of Indian Wells and how everything is just so nice and the people are so friendly and everything just runs perfectly. It sort of stifles her a bit. She says here the chaos and the craziness and it just seems to relax her. She says. It's good for my mood. It relaxes me. And that's when she said, maybe I should move here. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you have some explanations that are 
outside the tennis. <laughs> yes, <laughs> right. Outside the lines for sure. <laughs> uh, she's a fun personality to say the least. And we hope she doesn't yeah. follow her father's advice or that you don't influence him anyway anytime soon. We'd love to see Andrea Petkovic playing for years to come. As she's fighting a battle right now, she's down a break. Carlos Suarez Navarro has the upper hand in set number one. Break came in the third game. Since then, back to back holds for Andrea Petkovic has given her a shot at coming back. But Carlos Suarez Navarro has been so steady to this point. Brilliant one-handed backhand, but she's using the forehand effectively today. Suarez hey. Navarro now garnering her sixth forehand winner against no backhand winners. It's impressive that she's been able to wheel and deal. There is Petkovic's coach. Dirk wanted to come out onto the court between games seven and eight. He was waved off. circumstance to think that Andrea said okay I'm gonna work this out Daddy. myself I know you're here and you do have on court coaching as part of the rule that's all well and good but I don't need you right now give me a moment let me work this out inside my head meanwhile minus 11 for his charge in winners to errors thus far and that's why Carlos Suarez Navarro has advanced so easily to this point Daddy. absolutely well, sometimes the player just feel I got this you know it's just a matter of me trying to find my shots I don't need really any extra help I know you waved your father in out didn't you kick your parents out of one match <laughs> one time oh, come on, no, don't, don't <laughs> no but I'm just one up. no but I'm not but what I'm gonna say is <laughs> so mean is that you never waved your dad off if you wanted to come down to the court to talk to you, did you? Or did you have those moments where you said, you know what, actually I do need to do this on my own. I need to internalize this and process it. I never had those because I always felt my father was somehow able to give me a little something that was going to help me. But again, it's it's very independent of you know, each and every single personality. I will come back to this one about my parents because just I want to set the record, set the record straight. straight. Fair Absolutely. Enough. The one handed backhand from Carlos Suarez Navarro is not a shot that is very popular right now in women's tennis. There aren't a whole lot of players who use it. In fact, there's only three, I believe, if memory serves correctly, in the women's top 100. The highest ranked, of course, though, is the Spaniard putting the ball in play, number 12 in the world. It's a very difficult shot to have right now because the, the play is going so fast. 
to be able to have the enough th strength with just one arm to all those boards is very difficult. My country was a great Amelia Moresmo who used to master this shot. Oh, she was brilliant. So the ninth person correct himself, but he called it out and he cranked himself. But I saw that out as well. Exactly. So the the, the umpire is calling this one out. Miss yeah. Pedagogy tried to call on the red baseline. The ball's called out. So what happened is the term the line person called it out and correct himself, and then the umpire said, "No, no, I saw it out." So she called it out herself. It was out. Yeah, and that's why Jenny is so good and so respected okay. in the chair. Yeah. That, that indecision. Well. But so far, what is happening is Suarez are always very, very carefully serving to the body of Petkovic. And Andrea has not been able to find the range on the return of serve, so she's, for me, moving not inside the ball. She's retrieving too fast toward the center of the court, not putting enough body weight and body transfer toward that return before starting to uh, move toward the center. Petkovic hasn't been able to work her way into any of Suarez Navarro's service games, not a single break point on the day. Meanwhile, Suarez Navarro has had a couple of looks. She had three in the opening game of the match. She was able to break in game number three. Another break. She has the set. Reply like Baby. like Andrea just has is you have to take the time to look where your opponent is actually running before just hitting the open court. Just a little too lax a days ago. And Suarez Omar was all over it. Here's a half chance for Suarez Navarro to grab the set. Petkovic has just had her problems with maintaining a focus and keeping her frustration level down. Absolutely, and for me, she's really, uh, she's really not enough aggressive. She's not trying to hit through enough. If you give you a Suarez Navarro and kind of easy pace of ball, she's not going to commit any mistakes. Just to try to be more aggressive, Petkovic. Oh. And the frustration really starting to come to a boil for Petkovic now. She is up against it. You can see why, really, because Suarez Navarro ball is having always a little bit of shape. It's not a flat ball like Pliskova. And so far, Petkovic is really having a lot of trouble generating some pace out of this ball. The technique, her wrist is a little bit too stiff to really reaccelerate those kind of balls. So she's giving some uh, relatively oh. slow ball back. And Suarez Navarro is able to create everything she wants. Net seconds. She has broken the first drop set of the event for the German, Carla Suarez Navarro, shining bright on a Thursday in Miami. Carla, una cosa importante, a ver, el guión del partido, el guión. El guión del partido está yendo, está yendo totalmente. ¿Qué pasa, Guadalajara? 
El guión de partido está yendo totalmente hacia donde hemos hablado antes de empezar. ¿Me explico o no? Si llevamos el partido a lo tenístico, tú eres muy superior. Tienes muchos más recursos, tienes mucho más tenis. Lo estamos llevando muy bien. Entonces, eh, cuando, estés, cuando estés ahí viento en contra, Carla, cuando estés viento en contra, intenta, si te aprieta al revés, reducir errores no forzados, una, con más apoyo, más aceleración, que así caerá la bola, o dos, con el revés cortado para quitarle velocidad, que ahí ella no tiene mano y nosotros podemos coger la derecha. ¿Vale? Esto una. Y luego, lo más importante, Carla, el saque que hemos hablado, que estás haciendo, es una de las claves del partido. Sigue con la palanca en el saque, el cortado que resbale y que le entre al cuerpo. Porque ahí ella no tiene mano y ganamos puntos gratis o dominamos de derecha. ¿Vale? O sea, sobre todo lo más importante es que sigas todo el partido pensando en el trabajo y lo que tenemos que hacer. Porque ella te tiene mucho respeto y se está viendo inferior de atrás. Y esto te tiene que dar mucha tranquilidad. ¿Vale o no? ¿Vale? ¿El viento lo estás notando mucho a favor o no? Ya, yeah, pero ¿sabes cuál es la ventaja, Carla? Que este viento nos favorece. Tú tienes mucha más mano y tienes mucho más recursos para jugar con el viento. Ella, aquellas voleas que ha fallado, los fallos no forzados, etc. Este partido lo único que hay que hacer es el mismo guión todo el rato y reducir errores no forzados en momentos. ¿Me explico? Y sobre todo, sigue dándole muchísima importancia a sacar así. Porque esto te da mucha tranquilidad. ¿Vale? Vamos, que de cabeza estás perfecta, ¿eh? ¿Vale? Vamos. Back in Miami, ready to start set number two of the semifinal, but we'll have to wait a moment. You can't start the set without having two players on the court. Andrea Petkovic has headed off to the locker room just a moment, but her return is imminent. See her already in the tunnel, ready to take the field and see if she can come back from a set down. Carla Suarez Navarro has won six of her last seven matches when winning the opening set. The loss she suffered was quarterfinals. In Indian Wells against Simona Hallam, taking the opening set 7 5 and then winning just two games the rest of the way. We'll see if Andrea can find the recipe for success to come back Dying. from a set down after she drops her very first set of the 2015 Miami Open. So if Petkovic wants a shot at the final, she'll have to go three sets. Suarez Navarro has won her last two three set matches in the previous rounds. Starting off set number two, gonna give herself the advantage. Not going to see that a lot, but she's got a couple now. Aces picking her spots and finding her way, but has been serving well, winning 11 of 16 on her first serve, respectable 69%, and dropping just two points on her second. Well, that just goes to show, doesn't it? That's a very efficient serve. This one short wide. And again, using so many times this pattern. I think if I'm Andrea Petkovic, I really want to uh, take this one out of her, so just moving towards the corridor, toward the trim line, just to say, okay, I'm ready for this one. Just beat me down the line. 
Pimi with a um, serve down the tee. shape body coming to the net as well just too strong for now well that extends the lead now for the longest rally from 22 up to 30 and it just showed Suarez Navarro no fatigue going after that big backhand into the corner opening things up for her. full oh. command of her game right now and Petkovic is starting to Scratch your head and say, what's going on here? I'm just being pushed around, bullied by CSN. <laughs> she went to the bathroom at the end of this first set on Rapid Kovic with a racket. That's very unusual. Have you noticed? I, indeed. I have noticed, and I, I wonder... Uh, if I'm a journalist, I want to ask this question in a press conference. Speaking of uh, putting on your journalistic cap, let's talk a little bit about the numbers. Anything stick out for you from the opening set? Well, for me, really, the numbers is for Andrea Petkovic just one winner. As we talked about, uh, due to her technique, uh, the, she hit the ball extremely close to her with uh, almost no wrist action. So that caused a problem for her that any ball that is not at her waist level, so anything upper, anything lower, she is going to have a really hard time to generate anything. And so far, she just couldn't generate any pace because Suarez and always play really high, shoulder high. Just can't find some pace enough. So just can't produce winners. And committed. A know, lot of unfortunate Yeah, <laughs> well, it is the same numbers as Suarez Navarro, but the difference is really this one. Petkovic has one winner, Suarez Navarro has eight winners. Yeah. That's the difference for me. Sure. So the numbers that stick out being one, one winner. One set now lost. That has to improve on both sides for Andrea. Now, for the, fa the sake of full disclosure, we're going to open up a new segment here on our show. <laughs> <laughs> Marion obviously knows where I'm going. It's called Set the Record Straight. <laughs> and today's special guest star is Marion Bartola. All right, so I always had this question. So you're, you're claiming to be so close to your parents, but you ask them to leave the court one time in a moment. So to put their the record straight, it was back in 2011. I was coming on playing the final restaurants for against Andrea, semi-final of Ron Garros. Winning is born. And arriving in Wimbledon extremely tired and during this first week getting a really nasty virus, so having a lot of fever. So having some match points in my second round match against Dominguez Lino, being able to somehow find a way to win this one in three hours. But I didn't have a day off because of the rain. My match was postponed to the next day, so I'm su supposed to play the next day straight again oh. against Fabia Pineta. Oh. And of course, I Wimbledon Championship oh. schedule oh. was first match. <laughs> so back then, I was doing a good two hours of warming up before each match is. So I'm awake since 6 a.m. I'm already sick, I'm very tired, I have some fever, both of my parents are there. I'm losing the first set in an hour and 10 minutes, 7-5 against Flavia. In a kind of a gesture of desperation to basically for them to save them to really seeing me completely falling apart in the second set. I just said, are you two just leave? <laughs> just let me just basically just die in the second set, lose this one six love. I just don't want you to witness that. So you didn't banish them. 
yes. you didn't kick them out. You just asked them, could you just leave for a little while? I don't exactly. want you to see and witness this embarrassing. This misery is going to happen in the second set. All right. Turns out that I won 12 10 in the third. <laughs> and caused everyone to say, well, she booted him out <laughs> and the success came her way. All right, so the record is straight for that. Thank you, Marion. We look You're forward welcome. to having you back once again on our little segment we call Set the Record Straight. <laughs> Petkovic trying to get on the board here. She's come under a little bit of pressure once again, but she seems to be starting to work things out as to how to counteract Suarez Navarro's very <laughs> consistent level. <laughs> and she's got herself on the board. Yeah. One all in set number two. Speaking of setting the record straight, if you want to engage in conversation and give your opinion about what you think about things on the WTA, you can tweet them. You got to do it at 140 characters or less, but that's all good. Everyone's speaking really fast anyway these days. Twitter.com slash WTA is your way to engage and be a part of the whole thing. The big picture of women's professional tennis. Again, that shot, cross court with a forehand, just the same pattern over and over again. I think if I'm Andrea Petkovic, I want to watch this, this match in the replay on the videotape. Oh. Forgive me for clarification. You do want to or do not? I do want. Okay. You want to see what is really happening because you have a clearer mind next time when you come on court. Sometimes you do not want to see your matches. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I'm sure there's some matches you just banish to the bin, right? <laughs> but you're saying there are there lessons. There is some you want to see forever. Yeah. You see, it depends. But there just are lessons depends. to be learned from this one. It's just, you want to try to avoid that to happen. Yeah. And you want to try to target the back end of Suarez Navarro. Of course, easier to say, not offer to do, but I think that's the only option she has now, Petkovic. spoke to it before that you felt Andrea had to change something about her style of play to counteract what Suarez Navarro was doing and take herself a little bit out of her comfort zone to hit a bit harder. That's one thing if you've never faced an opponent before, but they've met four times prior and each have won two. So it's not a new situation. Absolutely, but I think, you know, the problem is the surface is take the spin a lot and the ball just bounce higher and probably the other surface they played in the ball was bouncing differently, and it's just a, just a problem of height, really. Everything that comes waistline of Petkovic, she's really good. Everything that comes higher or below that, she, she's in trouble. Suarez <laughs> Can you give me another ball, please? Can you give us the label? Thank you. Ich erinnere dich an das, was du gesagt hast. Ich erinnere dich an die Lockerheit. Ich erinnere dich an die Lockerheit. Ich habe keine Lockerheit heute. Müssen wir reinholen. Ich würde sagen, wir fighten das mal raus. Erinnere dich an die Lockerheit und Spielvariable und das einfach konsequent. Andi, gib Feuer. Gib Feuer da rein. Doch, wir holen das noch. Punkt für Punkt. Glaubst du? Glaubst du? Doch, doch. Wir spielen, um zu gewinnen und nicht um zu verlieren. Ja? Okay? Come on. Wir spielen, um zu gewinnen. Das geht. Ich verliere weder noch gewinne ich. Doch. Ich einfach gerade. Andi, find die locker. Okay? Denk, was, denk dran, was du selbst gesagt hast. Locker. Punkt für Punkt. Versuch dich darauf zu fokussieren. Du musst die Mischung finden. Und das konsequent. 
und das konsequent. Gib Vollgas in allem, was du tust. Okay? Einzelne Punkte. Wir sind ja da. Wir sind ja noch da. Das bringt halt nichts. Ach, komm. Aber wir können, wir können morgen das Spiel nicht weiterspielen. Es geht nur heute. Es geht nur jetzt. Es geht nur jetzt. Okay? Versuch das. Ja? Nein. Ah, wir sind da. Komm jetzt. Wir feiern das Haus. Komm, mal. komm. Komm, komm, komm. How is your team German, Kevin? You know, it's embarrassing because I come from German heritage, but I can speak about two words, and one of them is what I often hear myself described, that's described as Dummkopf. <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. But how's your German, more importantly? I was catching a little bit of this, so uh, Dirk came on court and said, stop talking and listen to me because she was just so negative on herself and Petkovic saying, I'm playing so bad, I can't do this, I can't do that. And just he said, you're really into this, you're playing good. You just have to keep fighting play point by point and keep believe you can win. So just try to basically keep her in this match. Sometimes when just, you're just too perfectionist. You can't accept to have a bad day, you can't accept to perform on the highest, and this is a, a tricky line to find between being hard on her yourself, but not too hard, so not, you're not beating yourself, basically. Nice stuff, and that's a couple of points for Andrea to start to feel the rhythm coming back. Hasn't had a lot to hang her hat on for this day. Now four winners. Remember, she only had one in the opening set. Yeah, you're hitting on something there, because Dirk Deere obviously has had a lot of conversations with Andrea Petkovic. She's a very contemplative, thoughtful person. Really bright. Nice to work things out and talk them out. The way she describes herself is exactly what he was basically saying. You need put some blinders on you need to regain your focus you're too worried about being perfect and she says that's basically the problem for her she needs to find a way to balance the discipline working hard and staying relaxed said the two people growing up that she most admired were Steffi Graf because of her emotional control and her ability to just work so hard and find out how to get the job done the other far different type of personality Serena Williams. She said Serena's kind of got that rock and roll rebellious sort of attitude. She doesn't care what other people think. She's about her situation. She can be more emotional. She lets it out. She says that combination is what I seek. Steffi Graf's work like emotional control and Serena Williams' passion and fervor. She said if I could just take 5% from either or both and add that to my personality, I'd be happy. Really? Well, what about if your personality is good enough? What about if you don't try to be like someone else, but you can just be yourself? Because well, she said only 5%. She didn't say 50 or <laughs> <laughs> You know, I think I, I always have this, um, it's almost a philosophical question I can, we can debate for a long, long time, but, you know, you cannot be anything else than yourself, because everyone else is taken. I like that. somebody who wants self-improvement and wants to find areas to make themselves better, whether it's their profession or their Absolutely. own person. Very close to the line, no challenge from Petkovic, and she's embroiled in another game to deuce. She's really feeling that forehand extremely well today. Carla Suarez Navarro. Well, if I want to take 5% of something of Serena Williams, that's her serve. <laughs> what <laughs> her serve. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like facing that down? 
Tonight, Simona Typical. Halep will have to do that again. <laughs> That's typical. <Yeah. laughs> it's fast. <clears throat> Sometimes too fast. Oh. Oh. Good depth allows her to get to the net. It's a very good play because one ball just really skid through the line during this rally from Suarez Navarro. She was able to recover well. And this one not missing the smash as she did in the first set. Three things are starting to even up now. Yeah, it wouldn't be hard to get four times as many winners in this set for Petkovic. Basically anything you put against one. But that's an impressive little slap of redirection. She just sort of unloaded one more time. And Carla Suarez Navarro finds herself giving chase more often than she did in the opening set. She was able to stay in rallies, but now she's finding the ball skip past. You understand the off kids? Come on. Oh, okay. All right. Oh, no. I haven't, no, but I'm I'm learning so much from you these days, man. I mean, I've got my journal here. I'm learning. You've got to be yourself. <laughs> a little bit of German. That's the first one she's missing. That's the first forehand she missed. So as Navarro. She might feel the commands and the emotion Petkovic is showing since the beginning of the second set. Maybe sensing a little turn of the tide here. I think she's feeling the pressure, the mental pressure our opponent is putting on her. She could really move forward and go to the net. She stayed in the base on the baseline. Just was ready to hit one more shot again. Always gonna be difficult to uh, to close this one out. <laughs> Suarez Navarro. And again. Don't want to return from this moment. <laughs> You just want to put up a wall on that side with a big X on Maybe it and say, don't go over here. Maybe I'm going to do this. I like the fist pumps after the point. Showing her opponent she's still very much in there mentally. Ready for the fight. Talk about the strategy there on the return. It, it's difficult to take that ball in and direct that okay. forehand down the line. Safer play across court? Well, of course, safer play, but if you have been beaten every single time playing across court, <laughs> you might want to get a crack and try to hit one or two down the line, right? Okay. I yeah. mean, what can happen? You can lose the point. You already lost it when you play cross court, so. Suarez Navarro had to work for it, but she still has not faced any real pressure today against her serve. She knows that the momentum has waned somewhat. 
but her lead has not still hasn't faced a break point today. There's a little battle going on, certainly between the two on the court, but also internally for Andrea Petkovic. She's trying to find a way to relax. She loves Miami because it's just a bit wild and woolly, and she says it helps her retain her focus. She's going to need all that and more. Carlos Suarez Navarro, an impressive beginning to this semifinal, the first of the day. Just brought her lunch box. She's got it packed up tight because she's going to work. She's got the tools. She's got the hard hat. She's determined. And that where it's very well played is as soon as she had this a ball that was really a little bit shorter, then she accelerated even more this forehand. Create that angle. The fact that she's got nine forehand winners, Carla, against none from the backhand side. How do you rate her backhand? The one hand that you said already, it's a difficult shot. Is I think for me, with the backhand, she can neutralize you. But this slice backhand was, again, a very good play against Andrea because that make her play and force her to play below the waistline. And again, what she doesn't like to do. So I think with her backhand, she can just really um, neutralize the game and the winners are going to come from the forehand. I remember when I play against her, I just target this back end all the time, all the time, all the time. That's the way I was able to win. Again, this shot, she just has so much time to get that racket under the ball and brush it cross court. First service game by either that found them not only in love 30, but now potentially broken at love and Petkovic this will frustrate her to no end she is really starting to struggle and she lets that one go and wisely to do so but really the pressure has been against her none for Suarez Navarro and as far as break points faced this is now number seven for Petkovic having been broken twice the back end for Suarez number it's so much tougher to generate some pace with precision. Ooh, that was tense. <laughs> Ooh, that was nervous. Uh, she knows if she breaks here, yeah, she has a massive chance to uh, win this match. I can tell you she's going to feel the pressure. And nerves aren't exclusive to one side. No, <laughs> for sure <laughs> They're not. equal opportunity. <laughs> ah, smart. This time she recognizes and waited just that little extra moment. We saw earlier that Petrovic just took a haphazard sort of swat cross court. Yes. Suarez Navarro ran it down. This time she gave herself a chance wait to that moment and hit the winner. Absolutely, but I think on this point, Suarez Navarro was still thinking about the two first back and she <laughs> missed at low 40. <laughs> Sometimes it 
tennis, it's about how fast you can hit that hard. Erase button. <laughs> erase, erase, erase those mistakes. <laughs> delete history. Delete, delete, delete. Sometimes it takes quite a while. It helps one psychologically. You just again have to find that reset button, delete, <laughs> delete history, <laughs> erase, however you want to call it. Andrea has to put that in the back of her mind. Very desperately to hold on here to get to three all. And here's CSN knocking on the door once again. A third break puts her up to the outright lead in set number two. She just goes about her business so well. Pressure on Petkovic's shoulders. She can barely move. And I'm not sure what happened here. If I'm not mistaken, twice she indicated she wanted a challenge at the last second when Well, because the Zhang umpire showed her basically the ball was one meter off. That's what, okay. But so I she think did. she's she's so nervous. She can barely move her legs. She has to really try to find a way to relax and do not think about the score. Otherwise, she's going <laughs> to go through a nightmare from now on. And this time we will have a challenge from, nope, a similar <laughs> circumstance. They trust the umpire. Yeah, well, Jenny's strong. Advantage. She's what earned her spot in the chair on higher position. <laughs> <laughs> she's on, she's strong. And there's a little friction going on inside stadium court right now. And it is Carlos Suarez Navarro who's applying it. Just a bit more pressure once again. How many times can Petkovic get out of the jam? Next. This is Struggles really start to mount for what Petkovic as means? she was hoping, trying to just grasping, saying, oh, please, putting her arms around the hopes <laughs> of being able to take this set. Well, the she was doing well when she came back from lock 40 to having the advantage, but then committed this double fall. And some mistakes again. Still a long way to go for Kalas Navarro. She's really, really nervous and stressed right now. Yeah, as much as Petkovic is struggling to find her game, Suarez Navarro trying to hold on to this lead, get herself to the biggest final of her career. Well, Andrea, I think the problem is she's really too focused on her own bad emotions. She just has to look at the other side of the net and seeing an opponent is so, so stressed. That should give her some belief. was right on the line and she was definitely not ready. I think she um, she's just losing too much energy, talking to herself, looking at her camp. Petkovic. That's 
now just the 11th point Carla has lost on serve in the match, winning 75%. But you can tell on that backhand that's usually so effective and so sure, that one sailed. Well, what's happening is to use that forehand cross court winner as she's been able to do so far until the match, she has to use her legs to do that. She has to create some pace using her legs. And because she's too tense mentally, her legs start to really not moving enough and she is not using them enough. So the risk is for her to not to do not be able to find this shot anymore just because her legs are going to let her down. This one just barely landing inside the court. If I'm Carlos Reyes Navarro right now, I want to be very careful of my movement. Just make sure I keep moving my feet, keep using my legs. Just call wide and Petkovic has to challenge. I think it's out. Oh, are we? I, th I think Eagle Eye Bartoli is back. Eagle Eye Bartoli is back in out. Miami and she's calling out, as was the I call think. from the line judge. And here's the challenge. Oh! Oh, no. Oh, okay. Well, okay, that was You'll close. You'll give yourself a break on that one. That was close. And you as well, sir. <laughs> Not a whole lot of room there. But very interestingly, for the first time, the whole match, when Swarzawa just served why she hit a backhand afterwards and she lose a point. Just saying. Uh, I noticed. That's pulled yeah. wide and Andrea Petkovic just can't understand what has gone wrong in Miami. She hadn't lost a set entering the semifinal. Now she's a game away from dropping her second, being ousted. Suarez Navarro, a game from the final. Nice, someone who it's important. I don't care what language you say it in. Feliz cumpleaños. Joyeux anniversary. Happy anniversary or happy birthday. It's more like a big birthday for Steph Trudell, the man who puts all those numbers on the screen for you, all the graphics. Happy birthday, big boy. Let's get back to the action. Joy. I got to get that down. How to say it one more time? Joyeux anniversary. Oh, yeah, I love it when you say that. <laughs> Petkovic serving to stay in the tournament. <laughs> We'll see what Andrea Petkovic says after this match when she talks so fondly of Miami and how it helps her to relax and feel as if it's a comfort zone for her. It has been anything but comfortable today against Suarez Navarro, and that is to the credit of the Spaniard. She has to avoid. Baby. She wants to make. Suarez Navarro on this one. Beating her, not committing. Something for Sarah Petkovic. Really 29. That's a lot for just uh, an hour and 20 minutes of play. 
indicative of just how much of a struggle this has been to find a way to battle Navarro and find Thank you, we'll any go. sort of success after the runs that she had to get through. McHale, two and two. Mladenovic, 0 oh and two. Makarova, 6175, and Pliskova, 6462. Petkovic, so much confidence to be able to come into this match with, but she certainly didn't display it once they got out onto the track and started their run. I think for me, really, what is the difference between the four players you mentioned and today is the different of type of ball they are giving. The other four are playing rather flat. Torres Navarro definitely causing a lot of problems just by hitting those heavy top spin ball. I can tell you at 5 3, this game is going to be something because she is really, really starting to get extremely stressed. Carla Suarez Navarro not moving her legs at all anymore. Spreading balls very, very far outside of the court. <laughs> well, <laughs> you've been alluding to it that she's been Florida tightening up as the set has gone on, and now it's time to see what transpires in the ultimate pressure cooker. Carla Suarez Navarro playing in her 19th career semifinal. Hasn't had a great deal of success, but she has had some. If she can get a single hold of serve, she advances on to her eighth WTA final, and by far, the biggest of her career. And she has only dropped 11 points so far in her serve the whole match. Great use of her footwork this time. Baby. Jumping inside this forehand. That using her legs, jumping inside to create the pace. Three points away. Three points away. Three points away. Two points away. I are you getting excited? I'm getting excited. You are. I can tell you. I'm getting excited. I don't even know how you're sitting down at this point. <laughs> Suarez Navarro <sighs> inching closer. Deep breath. Oh, oh and this time she returned to the back end. Now the message must have been a, a circuitous route from you, Marion Bartoli, down to Petkovic. It's gone around the stadium a couple times and now finally settled in. Stay away from the forehand. It's very well played to be aggressive. I think uh, now Andrea has recognized the fact that her opponent is really tight. Got to be a challenge. Ooh, that was close. Has to be. Oh, 
Does Eagle Eye want to come out and play? Oh, no. <laughs> All right. Eagle Eye Bartoli not going to be a part of it, but Hawkeye will. I think it was in. I think he was in. It was Ooh. not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Petrich can't believe it. And it looked closer than that as it flew by, but it wasn't close. And that means Carlos Suarez Navarro is poised to move on to a final at a premier mandatory event. Match with point. Double match point. Excited. for Carlos Suarez Navarro, arguably the most consistent performer this year. Her coach believed, even Carla had to believe. She holds on. Andrea Petkovic, a very worthy opponent and a show of sportsmanship. She appreciates what Carlos Suarez Navarro must be feeling. It was not the German's day. Semifinal number one belonged to the Spaniard as she moves into the biggest final of her career with a 6-3, 6-3 victory. And hugs for everybody. Oh, it's so great to see those emotions. What it means for those players. Such a massive milestone forward for her, being able to pull this one out in two sets. Really a very impressive performance. She started off the block extremely well, being able to uh, to have a really good tactic and just sticking to it throughout the match with a forehand cross court. Has been working so well since the second set of her match against Venus Williams. For Andrea Petkovic, well, she was not able to face Suarez Navarro in the final in Antwerp because of the bad neck for the Spaniards, so she got the title today. She falls for a second consecutive time, falls behind three and two lifetime to Suarez Navarro. It was just not her day. It was just not her day, but I think it was not her day due to the type of game Suarez Navarro is playing and giving this, uh, this really uh, brushy balls. It was not at all her to find a timing, but still a great tournament for Andrea Petkovic. Back into uh, close to the top 10. The, I think for me, the ranking where she belongs really. Such a great athlete, a great ambassador of the sport. I'm sure she's going to move to Charleston when she won the title last year. She have a lot more tennis coming in on the red clay as well. So uh, just a great performance today by Serena Zaro. Just really out, out playing her. So far, great tournament for Bekovic. So it means Carla Suarez Navarro picks up her 21st victory of the year. That's all well and good. She gets through the final of a premier mandatory event, something she's never accomplished before. And oh, by the way, congratulations, Carla Suarez Navarro. No matter what happens from here on out, come Monday, you'll be a top 10 player in the WTA. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Marion Bertoli may be the first to welcome Carla into the top 10. Well, it's going to be exciting times, but now she starts to focus her attention on how things will go in the next round. The championship for the Miami Open will feature Spain's Carla Suarez Navarro. Who she plays still remains to be seen because we have an exciting match coming up tonight at 9 p.m. local time here in Miami. It features world number one and two time defending champion winner here just seven times. Serena Williams Only taking on Simona Halep. Not so much. <laughs> seven times for me. And the discrepancy amongst the four women you see in the semifinals for Williams, not only seven titles here, but 65 in total. And for the three others, 18. It's pretty impressive. But what a match is coming up tonight. Serena against Simona Halep. Simona Halep, extremely impressive yesterday night against Sloan Stephens. So I'm expecting some great tennis. For those who are curious about the numbers of CSN versus SW or Simona, <laughs> <SW>. <laughs> it is Hal Halep who has been able to post a 5-4 lead lifetime against Carla. But of the four wins that the Spaniard has against the duo of Williams and Halep, none against Williams, losing all four previous meetings. So we have our first finalist. And can she become champion? She'll have her work cut out for her on the last day. Please join us on Saturday for that. But please don't miss tonight's contest. Serena Williams, Simona Halep, next to face the Spaniard. And while we have a chance, let's start to think about what she might say. How does she feel about the match? Was she impressed with her performance? All of these questions and more to be posed to her by court MC Andrew Krasny. He's standing by with Carla. Congratulations, Cara. Huge day for you, and you still seem so calm. 
Well, yeah, I, today I play really nervous also, Andrea, but sometimes, you know, tennis is like this, important match like, like this is, is difficult, and I just try to, to play my game and, and enjoy. First Spaniard in 22 years since Arancha Sanchez to make it to the final here at such a prestigious tournament and your biggest final, a premier level tournament. What's going through your mind about that? Yeah, it's a really important tournament for me. I, I just practice all day, all the time during the, during the off season to, to play in final like, like this. And I know that it's so difficult because the circuit, the players, uh, all the players are playing really good and, and it's, it's a special. Okay, so last question tonight. Are you going to go out to dinner or celebrate? Are you going to watch Serena play Simona? You're going to be taking on one of them on Saturday. Yeah, maybe I, I have dinner. I, uh, I think it's, uh, it will be a, a really interesting match. Uh, they are the, the both players that are playing really good for last year, this year. Uh, but tonight I think I'm going to be uh, dinner, but maybe here in the USA you go out to dinner and you have all the television with tennis, so maybe I watch the match. There you go, you'll have it at the restaurant. Congratulations. Carla Suarez Navarro, through to the final. <laughs> uh, great stuff from Carla as she will take her one title in Oreras and her one handed backhand into the final against Serena Williams for Simona Halep. Marion, your thoughts on that match tonight? Well, I think for me, really, it's uh, how Serena is uh, been able to recover from a really tough match um, in three sets that's really, really struggled for a long time under the sun. And uh, Simona Halep has been on her side extremely impressive. So uh, Serena always loves to play in nice sessions. She much prefers to play during the night and during the day. So I'm sure she will uh, start off the block really, really fast and try to be extremely aggressive. I'm still. Uh, I think putting Serena a little bit as a favorite on this match. But if Simona had to keep playing the amazing tennis she has been playing so far, winning back-to-back -back Dubai, Indian Wells, and all the matches in here, we are in for a very, very good one. We are in for a treat. It's a rematch of the WTA Finals in Singapore Championship. We'll see how it unfolds. For Marion Bartoli, I'm Kevin Skinner saying so long for now for our entire crew here in Miami, inviting you back once again at 9 p.m. local time for semifinal number two. Until then, we say adios from South Florida. Goodbye from the Miami Open.